but wherever you may be. This is a very important exhibition. Some of you who have followed the gallery for years would be aware that we've had an irregular start to 2019 and this is a launch after about six or seven months of not having in-house uh, exhibitions. So it's very exciting to have Bruce Rowland and Bruce and I had an exhibition planned earlier and we postponed that and uh, Bruce said, well, I've been able to do more work and I've put more work into those, those paintings. So it's really an exciting exhibition. It's called La Dance and it's uh, an exhibition featuring the ballet dancers. And the other feature is the works on paper, those that are under glass, which are pastel. And we haven't seen many of Bruce's works working in pastel. But uh, Bruce has been a long-term exhibitor of the gallery and going back to the 1980s. The one thing you'll notice about his work, there's a, a beautiful quality and a professionalism throughout the exhibition. If you went round and looked throughout the show and you sort of said, which work do I least like and which work do I like the best, it's usually personal preference. The quality and the consistency is just an excellent example of Bruce Rowland's consistency as a professional painter. And I believe this series is perhaps one of the best that Bruce has done over the time. And some of you who have followed his work over years would realise just the quality that, that does exist. After tonight, if you want to go and look at our website, cookshillgalleries.com.au, you can view each one, click on the items, and you've got this situation where you can zoom in and see the detail, because it's the detail and it's those underneath issues that Bruce captures. But also some of the detail that he has in the, the sheen of a shoe, or the light on the face of one of the dancers, or the actual uniform is just absorbing, it just invites you in to look at more and more. But you know, Bruce has got a huge skill of draftsmanship, he understands the figure, and then to go into dancing, and his involvement with dance has been there, and interest in dance and the arts has been there for as long as I've known. This is a very special exhibition, and one I'm delighted to have. Many people call Bruce Roll and a master of painting, and it is worthwhile just looking at the skill base that he's developed. To open this exhibition, I'd now like to invite Karen, Karen Barker Rogers, and uh, she's known Bruce for many years. Uh, Karen is a solo seal of the ARAD, DIP, Australian Ballet School, former, former principal of the Central School of Ballet. Following Karen's discussion talk, we're going to have a demonstration, a ballet demonstration, which is going to be really exciting, seeing ballet and a gallery and that, that whole thing, and that's what I really find is fun. Also tomorrow, if you know or you know, you'd like to invite friends, at 2.30 Bruce is going to do a talk and we'll walk around the paintings and it'll be a great opportunity. Please come along to that. Um, you can also see Bruce's work on uh, YouTube. Go to Artifactual and uh, interviews with Mark Widdop and Bruce has got seven segments there. Really worthwhile if you're a Bruce Rowland fan and would like to know more about him. His insight's amazing. I'd now like to call upon Karen to say a few words. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am extremely honoured and humbled to, ha uh, to be here tonight to open this wonderful exhibition of paintings, La Dance, and introduce the talented artist and dear friend Bruce <laughs> Rowland. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge some of Bruce's incredible achievements. Bruce studied painting and drawing at the National Art School in Sydney and was awarded a diploma in 1967. <laughs> <laughs> I was very young. <laughs> During his final year, he was invited to join the famous Tim Tupi Marionette Theatre and travelled throughout Asia performing with the company. 12 countries within seven months. Bruce moved to Newcastle in 1967 to take up a teaching position at the Newcastle College of Advanced Education for 40 years, most of those years as senior head teacher 
and gaining a diploma in education <coughs> and also a post diploma in art history from the University of London. His collections, commissions and art prizes are worldwide. He has exhibited artworks for over 50 years at various galleries. Invited to have survey shows of paintings at the Newcastle Regional and Maitland Regional Galleries, as well as exhibiting his marionettes at both these galleries. Commissioned by the Anglican Diocese to paint Christ the Church, which is installed above the entry into our uh, Christ Church Cathedral here in Newcastle. In 1987, Bruce was commissioned to design sets for the production of the opera Lo Boheme in the joint collaboration of the Hunter Orchestra and Australian Opera. He has also been a finalist in the Kilgore Prize and a finalist three times in the Manning Art Prize. Bruce has certainly developed a professionalism across so many mediums. I first met Bruce 35 years ago. <laughs> 35 years ago when I, <laughs> when I retired from my dance career and returned to Newcastle to begin teaching ballet with my sister Kim. Kim is also a wonderful artist and a past student of Bruce's. I remember Bruce coming to assist us in our very first ballet recital and refused to accept any payment. Instead, he requested a favour in return, <coughs> then followed by many Sundays as a model. <laughs> I was thoroughly spoiled with home-cooked food, introduced to music from the operas, and of course meeting his magnificent puppets. I think I got the favour. In 1972, Bruce formed the Newcastle Marionette Theatre. He produced eight productions of classic fairy tales and has approximately 150 marionettes in storage. Bruce does not live alone. <laughs> Bruce defines his fascination of dance through, number one, his world of puppet making and the influence of his dear friend, Igor Hitchcock, an ex-dancer that he worked with in the Tintukis. Also, his appreciation of opera and music and his knowledge and understanding of lighting, set designs and costuming. His focus on the personality of the dancer and the multi-layers in his paintings. Bruce also attended workshops in mime to improve his puppetry skills. This is when he realized the connections between ballet, mime and puppetry. Bruce describes this beautifully and these are his words. We rely largely on the body to convey the range of emotions and not the voice or facial expression. As with the mask, the puppet has a fixed expression. Therefore, we have to use the body to project the individual quality of the character, which is similar in dance and ballet. This can also relate to painting, as once again, we have a fixed image on the canvas but we rely on the visual movement and expression to convey our ideas to the viewers. We are asking them to, to participate in our performance. Beautiful words, Bruce, thank you. We are so fortunate in that Bruce's paintings continue to link the artist and the dancer. The ballet community is so grateful that an artist such as you can tra transpose so much of our beauty onto the canvas. This evening, we congratulate Bruce and celebrate his continuing success with this magnificent exhibition of paintings, La Dance, in this beautiful gallery. Congratulations, Bruce. And as a special tribute to Bruce, um, this evening, if we could all just step back, we would like three young dancers to perform a small adage set to the music in the Ballet of Sylvia, and they are from Studio Dance School, and if you could please welcome Sophie Crane Hayes, Chloe Cady, and Isabel Hillier.
Let's get to the